Have you ever wondered how different apps on the internet talk to each other in real time? How does Slack know the moment a new issue is filed in Jira? How does your payment system automatically update your customer database when a subscription renews? For a long time, the only way to get this information was to constantly ask for it. Hey, is it ready yet? How about now? This is inefficient, wastes resources, and is slow. Today, we're diving into a fundamental concept that powers modern, real-time applications, webhooks. We're going to move beyond the buzzword and understand exactly what they are, how they work, and why they're so much more efficient than the old way of doing things. By the end of this video, you'll be able to implement and use webhooks in your own projects. Let's get started. To understand webhooks, we first need to understand the problem they solve, polling. Polling is like that anxious kid in the back seat of a car, constantly asking, are we there yet? The client application has to repeatedly send requests to a server. Do you have any new data for me? Hoping that one time the answer will be yes. This is incredibly inefficient. Most of the time, you're just getting a no, which wastes bandwidth, server, CPU, and most importantly, time. There's always a delay between when the data is available and when you next ask for it. Webhooks flip this model on its head. Instead of the client asking the server, the server pushes data to the client the moment an event happens. The client provides the server with a URL, a callback address, like giving someone your phone number. When something important occurs, the server calls that URL with the relevant data. This push model is event-driven, real-time, and far more efficient. The client doesn't waste resources and it gets data instantly. So, what does this look like in practice? Let's break it down using Stripe. Step one, subscription. You, the developer, go into the Stripe dashboard and tell Stripe you want to receive webhooks. You give them a public URL on your server, like this one. You're essentially saying, hey Stripe, when anything interesting happens, send the details to this address. Step two, the event. Now, out in the real world, something important happens. A customer, let's say Jane, successfully pays her monthly invoice for your service. Step three, the notification. Stripe now acts as an HTTP client. It immediately sends a post request to that URL you provided. The body of this request contains a JSON payload with all the juicy details about what just happened. Jane's customer ID, the amount she paid, the invoice ID, everything. Let's look at some pseudocode. Imagine we have a tiny server listening for these Stripe webhooks. When Stripe sends us that post request, we parse the JSON. We see it's an invoice payment succeeded event. We then extract the customer ID and the amount, and that's our cue to trigger actions in our app, like unlocking Jane's premium features, sending a thank you email, and updating our own database. The key takeaway? is that your endpoint is just a regular HTTP server that accepts POST requests. It's like a doorbell. Stripe rings it and hands you a note with all the information you need to take action. This isn't just theoretical because webhooks are everywhere. Let's look at some other examples. GitHub uses them to power automation. When someone pushes to a repository, GitHub can send a webhook to a service like Jenkins or GitHub Actions, automatically kicking off your test suite and deployment process this is the backbone of modern DevOps. Webhooks are powerful, but with great power comes great responsibility. You can't just accept any post request that comes your way. Here are three critical best practices. One, verify the signature. Anyone can send a post request to your URL to ensure it's genuinely from Stripe, GitHub, and so on. These services send a secret signature in the headers, often using HMCA. Your code must recalculate this signature using a shared secret and verify it matches. If it doesn't, you reject the request immediately. This is non-negotiable. 2. Handle duplicates. Be idempotent. Services might send the same webhook more than once due to network issues or their retry logic. Your endpoint should be idempotent, meaning processing the same event multiple times has the same effect as processing it once. A common way is to check a unique ID from the webhook payload against a database of already processed IDs before doing anything. 3. Respond quickly. Webhook providers are impatient. If you don't respond quickly, usually within a few seconds, they might assume your endpoint is down and retry. So your endpoint should do the minimal work, like validating and storing the event, and then immediately return a 200 OK status code. 
do the heavy lifting like sending emails or updating databases in a background job. So let's recap. Webhooks are a way for servers to push data to your application the instant an event happens. They are more efficient than polling, they enable real-time functionality, and they are the glue that connects the modern web. You now know the subscription model, you've seen the technical flow and the code, and you understand the critical security practices. To play with this yourself, I recommend starting with a simple service like Google Forms or Formspree that can send webhooks to a free service like pipedream.com or webhook.site. You can see the raw data and experiment without even writing code. What topics should I explain next? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.